Hello everybody and welcome to another uh, furry art stream lecture study. I forget what to call these things anymore. But uh, yeah, today we'll be um, we'll be reviewing the head and neck and shoulders. Uh, as always, I'll be recording this and putting this up on YouTube. So hello to my YouTube audience, um, all five of you. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're we're hopefully gonna have some uh, some fun today, and we'll be covering it uh, it a lot. But um, hopefully we'll we can uh, we can have some fun and learn something and learn something along the way. So. Um, we've done heads before, so I'm not going to go into, like, a terrible amount of detail there. But to just kind of, like, quick recap, a humanoid head is roughly egg-shaped. And when it comes to defining the neck, uh, at least from, like, a, a, a front-on perspective... We've all seen those anatomical charts, and sometimes they can't, they are not uh, as helpful. Um, but I'll try and do it from a, like a, from like a set of variety of perspectives. So like usually if you're, if you're seeing like uh, an anime or something like that, the neck can be simplified to, to a cylinder. Um, in cartoons, it can be like, you got a character with a head, and then they've got some kind of cartoony collar or something like that going on. But the cylinder it's a it's a it's an abstraction and it can be uh it can be useful, it can be entertaining. It's a it's a shortcut sometimes. Um but getting into the anatomy uh can uh, can really help your understanding of like the way it moves and the way a neck can actually be positioned, and so we're going to take it from like the uh, we're going to take it from the anatomical perspective. Going to throw just in some like simple features there to give us a shape for. Our head. Oops. All right. Um. The neck has several kind of connector locations. Um. And so, like on a human head, uh, you you can think of those connections as like behind the ear, uh, specifically for the the shape of the muscles called the sternocleidomastoids and those those kind of reach up to the back of the head just behind the ear i mean you can you can usually if you turn your head to the side you can usually feel that muscle in your own neck uh it kind of um so there's the the pit of the neck where the where the two where it comes and makes that v shape right there uh and it has two connections to the clavicle. And so if it's really developed, it can be kind of bulky. But yeah, so this, this pit of the neck area is very important. You can think of it like a, a kind of an upside-down star formation. It has to be the world's worst star. But, um, you can think of it in this formation where these two will be, I'm going to call it SCMs for short. These are sterno sternocleidomastoid, and then out in this direction will be your clavicles. Or shoulder bones. Same thing. Uh, well collarbone it's probably more commonly used
and that's a structure that's unique to um, kind of primate forms. There are a lot of mammals don't have a collarbone, like your house pets usually don't. Cats and dogs don't have collarbones, uh, but uh, if if we're making anthro art, it's going to be fairly human centric, and so we're going to have a collarbone. Uh, and for like, um, so the the sternocleidomastoids reach up to the to the sides of the head. Uh, if you're going to make this an anthro form. Um, it's a it's a good place to start like the ears as well you can make these big pointy ears again I need to decide what animal this is and get like a reference or something like that but uh, but that can be kind of a a starting point A dog shepherd mix of some type, maybe. I don't know. Decide what you want. Um, okay, so let's see. From the front, uh, usually that's most prominent is the uh, sternocleidomastoids. Um, that's that's these muscles right here. The SCM can form part of the uh, the star formation, or you can think of it as like a star formation, but. Oh yeah, and then the bottom. This is the uh, top of your uh, sternum for the rib cage. They all connect at this spot, and so you can think of uh, it's. Is it a bony structure? Yeah, um, but the it, there's this is a this is a joint. So like if you move your arms up and down, you shrug your shoulders, you can feel your uh, collarbone moving up and down, and it's pivoting from that uh, pit of the neck area that attaches with the sternum. So let me kind of let me kind of draw that that out. And the way that I've seen this uh, simplified. Uh, is it takes kind of like a, an upside down coat hanger shape. So like if you got a coat hanger, it's like uh, does this kind of upswing motion, and it's got the the hook or whatever on the end there. This is really overemphasizing it. It's the 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 curve is subtler than this, but uh, but that'll that'll get you the point. And so the uh, this will go over and it will attach to uh, both the, the humerus, uh, which is going to be the upper arm bone, uh, and then behind it's um, this, this entire shoulder joint attachment uh, will be where your um, scapula or your uh, shoulder blades meet up. And so you can think of the neck area uh, as... Uh, as the as the area between the clavicle and the scapula, so between the collarbone and the and the uh, shoulder blades, uh, and so we've got the the muscle that is here is uh, you can think of it as like a back muscle, but it um, uh, it uh, it protrudes, and sometimes there's a little cavity there, like especially if you're shrugging or something like that, there can be a, a little cavity formed between the uh, the clavicle shoulder bone and the trapezius, which is a muscle. So like it's that's not a that's not a bony structure from the back, but it is from the front. And so where your primary bony structure on the back is gonna be your uh, scapula which you usually won't see a whole lot of but you can, but um that's also a marker for um where to attach the deltoid muscle so you can think about the deltoid muscle as about halfway as attaching about halfway from the uh from the uh the collarbone the clavicle and then it goes down into the humerus and it kind of provides a a sheath 
for uh, pectorals from the front uh, and for biceps because the biceps kind of come out of that area so and so you can think of it's attaching to the clavicle right here kind of covering over the top of that uh, the the joint where it connects to the humerus and then around the back it's connecting to the scapula and it meets up with the trapezius back there so all right um, let's see here are there any questions so far or um, any particular angles that you that you want to approach this from because otherwise I'm just gonna go with like we'll do something maybe a little like upper into the side um, we'll rotate the head a little bit do stuff like that unless someone has something specific that they want to so yeah you can remember this kind of star shape sternocleidomastoid clavicles and then the 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 pectorals um, uh, attach to the uh, the clavicle as well a little bit so this entire sternum of the ribcage area kind of covered up by the by the deltoids and so on it's kind of a big head for a furry creature but that's okay it's not really what we're concerned about all right cool so uh, coat hanger clavicle <laughs> Let me just get this. I'm just going to put that over there. All right. Let's try slightly from the back. So I'm going to make this kind of I'm do a little abstraction here. So I'm going to have like a shoulder here and a shoulder there and we're going to do kind of like a, an upper and back side. So if I've got my shoulder here, I've got my clavicle. Again, kind of shaped like a coat hanger on both sides. And this can be like a hollow, but uh, the sternocleidomastoids will come up and then from the back will be this uh, the trapezius which is kind of a you can think of it as like a kite shaped muscle or a group of muscles uh, if it's super developed it can kind of bulge outwards but yeah so if we're seeing it from the back we'll get like the back of the head too And then we could say this will be kind of like a this will be the the jaw shape of a of a humanoid. But yeah, if that's if the clavicle's reaching up here, deltoid comes around here. That's a sheath. So if this is a the same kind of furred creature before, we're gonna want to get those ears on there, and maybe it's turning away from us right now. That seems to be the direction that that I'm taking it.
But yeah. So if you feel at the at the back of your neck, um, there's there's the there's the bony protrusion of the spine. I think that's uh, I've forgotten the name of it. Cervical thoracic lumbar. Yeah, that's that's the um, cervical number four. It's the most prominent. It's about there. So, I usually, um, if you're leaning forward, it can kind of stick out. But if you're standing erect, it can kind of make a hollow space. So depending on whether your person's leaning this way or that way, it can create kind of a lump going this way or kind of a hollow and since they're standing more up it can be like a little bit of a hollow so we'll get the we'll get a rough kind of shoulder blade looking thing back here and there this is another useful thing for like the back the trapezius kind of makes this M shape where you've got, you see the M, kind of, it's a weird M, but this is going to be one of the uh, under wings of the scapula, and then the the big V shape in the middle of the M is going to be the, the uh, lower uh, side of the trapezius, and so trapezius comes down and connects to the scapula and to the rest of the spine. Deltoid comes in from the scapula and from the front of the clavicle. But yeah. Okay. Let me... Let me do this one so that we can kind of see like an, uh, an underneath the head. Um... So I'm going to I'm going to angle the shoulders like this up and then I'm going to show us the underside. The underside of a head and muzzle area, let's say. And so if this is our head shape, whoops, we cut it about in half, we can place the ears. Whoops. Always happens when I'm streaming. Because I don't remember to turn it off. All right. So if we've got the, if we're saying that this is our neck and we're kind of leaning up about there, uh, we've also we have to take in mind the kind of uh, funnel shape. So like if this is the bottom of the jaw, yeah. If this is the bottom of the jaw. There's kind of a fleshy funnel that goes from the chin, and so it like, if you know the shape of like a, let me demonstrate a funnel, because some people haven't used funnels. <laughs> and the purpose of a funnel is to get liquid from like a, a big splash zone into a tiny space. And so you can think of the this is kind of like a fleshy funnel, uh, but it also has kind of a a blocky space right about there. That'll be the voice box. Um, it's uh, it's typically more prominent in men, so that appearance is called the Adam, Adam's apple. But it's not uh, it is not unique to men. 
Like, if you have a voice box, you have a larynx. You have a, you have an Adam's apple, so to speak. But, yeah. So we can think of that funnel kind of coming down, tucking down between the V of the sternocleidomastoid, which is going to reach from this... Uh, there we go. If I draw just a little star the way that I normally do. Alright. So we got the sternocleidomastoid coming up from one side. We're not going to see much of that other one. It could potentially show up. Trapezius from the back of the head. Clavicle coming out in the coat hanger form. Deltoid reaching out from about halfway, curving around the back. And then so up here might be a little more squishered. Featuring my cat, if you can hear him. Thank you for joining us today. Special guest star, Oscar. But yeah, so there's another potential angling of the neck, or at least the starting out trying to do that. Kind of a meathead character, maybe. That's fine. Meatheads are valid. All right. Yeah, and again, you just want to um, be mindful because it won't show up from there. Because if you're if you're angled out that way, the hollow of the neck pretty much disappears. So yeah, that's not going to be that's not going to be a feature you put in normally. But yeah, that's one way that you could do it. Oscar can teach us about beans. Yes, he can. <laughs> guy over here now. Oh, shush. Lunch isn't for another two hours. He's mad. So yeah, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Come on, let's restore some dignity. There we go. 
and you can kind of see things coming together, you know? But yeah. I think I might shrink this guy down. <gasps> up here? Up there? Eh, if I move to the funnel, maybe. I can just erase the funnel. It has served its purpose. No, I'll keep it on here as a reminder. Funnel. Neck funnel. That gigantic hole that is your mouth needs a funnel so that it gets into your... so that food gets into your stomach. Alright. Funnel and learning. Thanks. All right. Um. Let's see here. Anything else about? Anything else about the shoulder? So, um. Let me just kind of reiterate that. Uh, that the sternum is a pivot point for the clavicles. And so the clavicles can go up and down from it, kind of rotating from that pivot point. And so um, whenever you're positioning the arms, like if, uh, if ever a character is reaching over their head, uh, keep in mind that so um, you want to avoid uh, uh, kind of action figure syndrome where, like, they'll have this big chest area, right? And then they'll have arms rotated up like that. And that's extremely unnatural uh, because, um, because the toys don't have moving clavicles. So you don't want something like this. You want something more. Let me move this one aside. We're going to shrink this. So you don't want something like that. You can draw out the torso in the seam uh, in the same way, but keep in mind that the clavicle rotates, and so we gotta push. We can push the clavicle up, right? Push it up from here, and those same shapes will be present uh, And then we'll see the. Let's see here. If I'm pushing them up. It's going to pull up the pec some. It's going to squish through the deltoid a little bit. It's still attached to that clavicle. Let me try and keep the coat hanger shape in there so it... so that we're reminded. So we kind of squish up the deltoid and then we open up the underarm pits area. You want more of that action. So. Again, not 100% totally accurate here, but like. If someone's just kind of rotating their, their arms forward, kind of like a, kind of like an action figure does. Because that can happen.
You want more like that going on? Things will be. The ears will likely be a little bit squished. Coming out to the top here. Draw like a piece of cooked bacon. Treats! <laughs> but yeah, all that to say, just like... Don't count on... Like, you can, you can get, like, an action figure, and that can be kind of like a basic muscle reference, but remember that actual human body has a joint right at the, at the pit of the neck here. So, that the clavicles can, can raise up from. And so that can give you, that will give you a much more realistic arms reaching up or reaching out pose. So, like, the clavicles don't only swing, uh up and down, they swing back and forth as well, and so that can uh, provide uh, a little extra, like if um, if your character's like hunched over, the clavicles can, can move forward, and the shoulders kind of come a little bit closer together as they move forward. So if someone's reaching forward for something, Someone's reaching forward for something, the clavicle will come like a little bit forward. Kind of lean the head forward a little bit too. Can make it more powerful. Uh, if ever you want to see the arms. Uh, like in motion, if you want to do like a motion study, uh, you can always study like uh, football or baseball players as they're throwing the ball. And that can give you an idea of like, oh, uh, you can um, you can be paying attention to their, their torso and their clavicles or something like that. And you can say like, oh, okay, so it moves forward like that. Can give you a better understanding of the body's function. Yeah, there's kind of in a Spider-Man pose. Just make this a spider dog. Thwip. Have fun, you guys. Don't forget to do that. Don't forget to have fun. Alright. Um, let's see here. Oh, looks like you're the only one left. I must have bored everyone else to tears. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's see here. When reaching, when reaching up, you might also see a bit of, like, um, 
the latissimus dorsi from the back. It's another back muscle. Um, comes right up underneath. So um, we've got the trapezius uh, and latissimus dorsi. I believe comes up underneath the scapula. Ugh. I need to get better at anatomy. But it can basically be like this uh, side wing muscle right there. And then it can kind of peek out the front if someone's taking, especially if someone's like turning in a certain way, it can it can peek out there. And so that will be kind of like the backdrop for like an armpit area or something like that sometimes. What else? I mean, just just remember that it connects to like the spine and the and the rib cage. Uh, maybe I could do a little bit more about the the spine or explore the the back a little bit more completely. Let me make a new one. So if we've got a character from the back, well, let's get it from the back and side again. We're going to still have the torso area. Cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, shoulder blades. Deltoid, trapezius. And a lot of this is just practice and observation. And if you don't get it right, you can always say, eh, bodies are weird. I didn't get it right. If we were always right, we wouldn't have Google. Right, so we got the... Again, we got the same formation. It's nice. Lots are gonna come back. Eh, maybe we wouldn't see that so much from this particular angle. Well, that'll be from from there. Uh, and then we've got let's see here. Our, we're gonna have like the obliques coming in from the side. The obliques coming in from the side. Latissimus dorsi kind of poke out right there. Gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. It's all connected. Do your anatomy studies. Be better at it than I am. Because if this looks good, uh, this is this is what it looks like to fake it. At least a little bit. Draw out them butts. Draw out them tails. Different people will deem will uh We'll do different things, but I personally like the tail as a continuation of the 
flow of the spine. Cervical vertebrae. Why not? Yeah. Thoracic. Thoracic. Lumbar. This will be the spine. So remember that the back of the neck is the cervical vertebrae, the thoracic or everything that attaches to the rib cage, uh, and the lumbar is everything uh, between the rib cage and the pelvis area. So yeah, that's useful to know. Painting, yay! Yeah, you're totally free to do something at the same time. Not a problem. So yeah, if you get these under structures, if you get the muscles right, it can just make, you can just uh, give a little more form and detail. It might not always pop out on the furry figure because covered in fur. But that's okay. Oh, um, it's worth remembering to, to, so, like, as the, uh, so, like, if I'm trying to draw, like, the collarbone through up here, trying to draw through, we've got this kind of coat hanger shape, and the ends of the coat hanger will go up and down, so, too, will the shoulder blades. Uh, except they don't have, uh, they aren't attached to anything, so there's not really a, a pivot. Um, there's not a pivot for the shoulder blades, it's more like it's attached to the humerus, and so it kind of rotates out from there, but it will generally go this kind of like swinging out and back motion. So remember that about the scapula. And so, yeah, just uh, the entire shoulder, neck area, it's all connected. Showed you a little bit of the front. A little bit of the front and the upper torso. Bit of this, bit of that. I want something more like this. And not so much like that. But, uh, yeah. Alright, uh, I think I'm just gonna tie it up here, because I don't really have that much more to, to cover. Um, but yeah, practice. If, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can always, uh, ping me in the Discord, or, uh, on YouTube, you can leave comments. Um, yeah, and, uh, and I'll do my best to, to kind of answer any, uh, any questions that you have. Uh, that'll be it for the head, neck, and shoulders today. That'll be it for this recording. Uh, YouTube audience, if you like, do the YouTube things. Subscribe, ring bell, whatever you want to do. Alright, um, yeah. And so I will now end the recording, and I'll probably hang out on the stream a little bit. But, uh, yeah. Bye for YouTube!